So, just a little bit about me. I was, I came in off the streets pretty much, 17 years ago. I've never been in a church before. I thought Christianity was pretty much for fools because of the dry tradition which most people in Christianity live in. They say it's supposed to be a religion where we follow the living God, the God who created it, heaven and earth. But when I saw Christianity, I saw it as dry. I saw it as a burden. And I didn't want anything to do with it. And it's been many years that I realized that that's not the case. That we do serve the living God. That he does hear our prayers. But for some reason, it's taken a few years for my mind to be renewed. For the Lord to take the old ways of thinking out of my mind and show me what he has got planned for us. So this morning, I want to invite you on a journey. It's a small piece of my story, a small piece of my journey where I'm on. And my prayer is this morning that my part of the journey will have something for you to take. So let's just close our eyes or keep your eyes open. And let us just honor the Lord with just a thanksgiving, a prayer of thanksgiving. Yeah, Holy Spirit, I actually just even come before you because you are beautiful. Holy Spirit, I say thank you that you are here this morning and that you always lift up the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, I just want to welcome you here in our midst and give you the honor and the glory as the the guest of honor. We open up our hearts to you and we say, Holy Spirit, come and have your way. We say thank you, Holy Spirit, that you show us how to live a life which Christ has promised. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you do not abandon us and you do not forsake us. I say thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are the one who gives life and life in abundance through Jesus Christ inside of us and that we are not alone. I pray this morning, Lord, that that you will open up our minds to receive the new, no longer the old. We know that Father God, one of the most amazing things ever in Christian, in Christian history, Lord, that the most number of Christians ever at one point have come together here in South Africa, Lord, and we are aware that your spirit, your blessing, your reality is over us, Lord, and I'm just so aware that by the prayers over the whole nation, there's been something unlocked in the spiritual realm, Lord, that what we knew in the past will no, no longer be, That where you are taking us forward now, Lord Jesus, is in a place where we have never tasted before. The past things are old. The past things will no longer be because there's a brand new thing before us. And it's only those who can see it who can actually eat from it. Holy Spirit, we honor you. We love you. We adore you. And we welcome you in Jesus' name. So, for those of you who know me a little bit, I'm, I'm much more flow towards a prophetic side. So, I'm not really a, I, I feel like I'm a teacher, but I'm much more in a prophetic. So, I'm going to try to use stories and pictures from my past to try show you a picture of what's happening in my heart. It's about 10 years ago, I was at a, a very big music conference, Christian music conference, and there was a big prayer circle. And in the prayer circle, someone was telling a story, a testimony. And as she was telling her testimony or her story, the Lord gave me a really intense picture. And it had to do with a massive angel which was able to stand between nations. The angel got a command from God to say, it's time. This is 10 years ago. The angel went up to a switchboard, a power DV board. He took the power switch and he switched it off. I saw a picture of the earth and I saw all the Christians, all the ministries, all the churches, all the pastors, all the Christians who really loved the Lord running back and forward. All their little lights on the planet was the only source of light which our planet had. So now you can imagine if there's a big angel and he switches off the power switch, how each one of these little lights starts dying off. And I thought, this can't be from the Lord. And he said, careful. And then each one of these little lights started dying off. I saw the last pastors really running around to try and make the fire going and, you know, try turn that wheel and there's just nothing. There's just no power. And the earth goes dark. And the earth goes very dark. 
and a season passes while there's just darkness over the earth, and then in the distance I see a single candle get switched on. Well, not get switched on, gets the same angel which put the power off, he took a matchbox, went up to a candle and lit one candle. And what happened in that is that in the dark spot there was one single candle burning. Do you know who were the people who went to the candle? Each one of those people who had a passion and a heart for the light. It sort of filtered all the people which were busy with busy works and busy with things according to their own ways from the people who desired light. So what I saw is that there was this candle and then pretty much happened that all the people who desired light moved to this one candle, but they were tired, they were much, they didn't know what to do anymore. They read the promises of God, but they do not receive any of them. And there's frustration and there's hurt, but they still know Christ. They love Christ. They love the concept of light. They love the idea of knowing Christ. And they move towards the candle. And right there at the candle, I saw a very distinct picture of Jesus Christ standing there as the groom waiting for his bride. And he had a rose. And as the, as the bride came to that one light, Jesus' heart melted for joy and love. And he took his bride and he gave her the rose and started dancing with her and said, this is all what it's about. And it's from that place of intimacy from which I want to share this morning. If you're sitting here this morning and it, it feels like you've had these prayers, you've, you've trusted God for so many things, but it hasn't actually come to be. You don't even know if God really exists because you've asked so many times and it hasn't happened. You may be even following Christ just because it's a tradition. And if you are following Christ, sometimes you feel in my spirit anyway, that you know there's more, but it's just not coming. There's a scripture which I read maybe about three years ago, which shook me to my core. Now, I want you guys to take this journey and just imagine this for a second. Peter and John, they, they go to the temple to worship God. The resurrection has happened. The Spirit has come upon them. So we're sitting in the same context as these guys. There's a guy outside of the temple and he says, please give me some money. Peter goes up to him, and you know what he says? Let me come tell you about Jesus. Let me come sit next door to you and let me minister to you. For some reason, the Bible doesn't say that. You know what Peter did? Peter said to this guy, what I have, I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, get up and walk. The thing which stood out to me wasn't so much the miracle in itself that he actually stood up but was the mindset of Peter to take that arrogance and the pride and, and say, what I have, I give to you. It shook, it shook me. Three, four, five years I've been walking with the scripture and I still don't get it. But the Lord slowly opening it up for me. What I have, I give to you. And in that there's no pride, <laughs> there's no arrogance, there's a broken humility because he knows who his Lord is. But yet he also understands who he is. To be able to proclaim to a leper, to a deaf person, to someone who's lame, to someone who's barren, what I give you, what I have, I give you. I push pause there because this was too much for me to chew. Things continue. Galatians 2.20. It is no longer you that live, but Christ who lives in you. Yay, that's a nice scripture. What's the next one? It is no longer you that live, but Christ who lives inside of you. It is no longer you that live, but it is Christ himself inside of you. Romans 6. Baptism. For those of you who were raised from the baptism were unified in the same resurrection power as Christ. Your old man no longer exists. You now have got the identity of Christ. Yeah, okay, it's too much. Let's go to the easier scriptures. You no longer have your own mind. You have now got the mind of Christ. What? <laughs> And this isn't stuff which the Lord says, this will be yours. 
This is not something which says, earn it and you will receive it. This is the sort of stuff which the word of God itself, Father, you tell me this. This, this, this isn't me making it up, Papa. This, this is what you tell me is real. What's happening, Lord? What is in my mind? Why do I have so much other rubbish in my mind? And I'm going to tell us this morning that I really believe strongly and prophetically that this new season we are moving into starts off here. I believe the prayer covering which is over the country has got one major focus. Yes, repentance and humbling for the country, but inside of that, it's also to walk by faith. A man who prays without faith is nothing else but a man tossed around like a wave with no power. Let him not think for a second that the Lord will hear that prayer. So this is the challenge stuff I'm working through. This is my heart going, what, Lord, what? <laughs> a friend, where's Fawn? Anyway, there's a, there's a friend of mine who's really got a passion for Jehovah's Witnesses. And we, we oh, hey Fawn, what do you better? Drink all coffee. And what we did, we came together and we started praying and I asked some people to pray for us. And I just listened to someone pray. And so we go to the Jehovah's Witnesses, to the, the Kingdom Hall, and the prayer which I heard came something like this, oh Lord, protect them, keep them safe. Lord, please, Lord, go before them. Something struck me, my whole inside of my person, now listen to this, was shaken by the amount of doubt the intercessor had. The amount of doubt that intercessor had. There was no faith in the prayer. Do you know that it's not faith to say, I know God can heal? Do you know that there's no faith required to say, I know Christ is Lord? Because Satan himself knows it as well. It does not make him a Christian and neither does it make you a Christian. Faith is to know your God, to know his heart, to know what he wants and you coming in line with his heart and walking because you know he walks before you. You never have to pray, oh Lord, walk before me. Because I asked that to the Lord and he looked at me and says, I don't understand the prayer. Have I not promised a million times? I will walk before you. I will prepare the way before you. I will put the angels in front of you. Oh Jesus, please be with me, please Lord. Oh, I'm so afraid, Lord. Oh, please walk before me, Lord. And Jesus says, I don't understand the prayer. Have I not told you time and time and time and time again, you are not alone. Yes. Amen. Have I not told you over and over again that I fill you? My presence, my spirit, my love is in you. Arise and shine. Not Israel, you, because the light is in you. And this is just starting with the preacher. Are you guys interested to where we're going? The Lord, He is God. The Lord, He is God. And two, three, four days ago at the camp, the Lord just blew me away with a testimony. My kids, three and four, a bunch of friends, they're playing frisbee outside here. And even this is a little bit weird touch on my heart because it's so real. This is who God is. The favorite frisbee of a little kid threw it up on the, on the roof and very heartbroken, very sad. And my little guy, Caleb, goes up to the, the older lady and says, Come on, bid that Jesus um afbring. And to say the old man, the old, ah, yeah, okay, come. It's okay, and she's trying to help the young guy crying, and she's not listening to my son. And this is also grace. Eh? So the, they ignore him. Another young kid with a frisbee has to get in the car to go home. And he starts crying again because his frisbee is still on the roof. Caleb comes, five years old, he comes and he says, Tasha uns moet bid, Jesus kan die wind stier om afbrang. And actually to give my kids some peace, you know. She says, okay, kom ons bid, Caleb, gaan jy bid. Klein cirkelkie, vijf, ses, klein kinders. En hy vraag, Jesus, bring die wind en bring hy frisbee af. Toe hulle hulle oop oopmaak, daar leed die frisbee. There, there, right there, right here. Miracle, boom, mindset. This, what, huh, what? He has this desire. 
His desire to be real in your life is much more than your desire. Is much more than your desire to know Him. His desire for Him to be real in your life is much more powerful than your desire to know Him. His heart to you is so full of love and passion that He gave His own Son. How much more do you think He wants to be in your life? Every day, manifest, presence, power. Since my mind has started changing with this, I'm seeing more of the Lord manifest in reality. And a lot of people say, yeah, but then you just get full of pride. Can I be honest with you? The more the Lord's power starts manifesting in your life, the more you get undone, the more you get broken, the more you realize you need grace, and the more you realize how you can't obey, the more you realize how short you fall from your desire and your way you want to please God, but you plug into grace. Oh, in the time of need, let us go boldly before the throne of grace and receive help. You do not need help when everything is fine. But how about in our mindsets, in our hunger within us, that we are always in a point of needing grace? The journey which I want to take us on pretty much has to do with the Israel nation in Egypt. Complaining before the Lord because the promises of God are not there. Complaining before the Lord. Then he sends a Savior and then there's more stuff to complain about. You know, I don't know, you, some of you historians out there can help me, you guys who really love uh, the Israel story and the Exodus. Just in a little bit of research I did, I find out that it's only an 11 day walk from Egypt to the Promised Land, 11 days. 11 days. 11 days. Do you think Father wants to send his children for 40 years into a desert? No. 11 days. Why did the people not receive the promised land? Their ways of thinking were still not renewed. Those men, those women who knew the Lord for decades already, their minds were still not renewed. And that's not you guys, I mean that's maybe me. We know the promises of God. <laughs> we know them. Where are they? And I know this is a touchy subject because this is one of the raw nerves of my heart. But we continue pushing in. But not always with the results we know the Lord wants. Lord, what, what needs to change? My mind my mind have I not said I will walk before you have I not said to you I will prepare the way fear not for I am with you here's something which challenges me now if this is true <laughs> count it all joy my brothers count it joy emotional happiness express it in joy when you go through trials and tribulations what <laughs> Sorry, I might be going back and forth, but I want to focus on something. Why would the Word of God say that? Lord, you're not understanding my situation. Because the Lord will not bring through anything upon your path which He is not with you in the situation. He is in your corner. This is an opportunity to see the Lord inside of your problem. We have gone through so many problems in the past, but we still do not recognize that when we come to a problem... I must be filled with joy. I must pick up the phone and say, hey, David, you know what? You're going to be jealous, my friend. My kid just broke his leg. There's no medical insurance. I've got major issues. Praise God, this is going to be awesome because he's going to come through. So how many of you guys have that mindset? Praise God. How is it that we read the scripture for so many years, for decades, but we do not let it change our hearts. Decades. Some of you decades. For me decades reading the same scripture. Oh let it be a joy unto you. Count it a joy. An emotional expressive joy. When you go through this difficult time. Oh my God. I'm so happy. I'm so happy. 99% of the Christians I know have that mindset, starting off here. Count it joy. How is it possible? 
mindset. Caleb and Joshua, can you imagine the frustration these guys had? <laughs> they see the miracles day and night. They are aware that the Lord, their God, is with them. And so did four million other people. And they were the only two, <laughs> two, which knew and believed that as the Lord had supplied in the past, he will supply in the future. And they actually saw the problem before them with joy, with expectation, and they knew God would overcome. Long before the emotion of negative hit them. What is faith? And how faithful are you? Eleven days took 40 years. Every day, every day, God's miracles, signs, and wonders came upon them, and they did not change the way they thought. I want to challenge you this morning. I'm guessing most of you have already got this new mind. I'm still on the journey. But I want to challenge you for this new thing which is coming, this promise of the Lord upon his Christians, upon his children, is for those who walk by faith. Faith. To walk by faith is the only thing which can actually please your God. Not your obedience, <laughs> not your sacrifice, not who you think you are. You need faith. And faith on a whole different level to which we have never tasted before. When we pray and we go on our knees and we ask the Lord to walk before us, you stop yourself right there. And you repent that you do not have faith because you do not yet know that your God has already said, I walk before you. I fill you. My angels are around you. My hand is upon you. Now arise and walk like a man and a woman who knows that I walk before you. Or are you going to just cry in a corner because you don't feel that he's walking before you? If you are on your knees and you're praying and I was praying for more than 10 years, the same stuff, and the Lord told me 10 years' worth of prayers have had no impact in the heavenlies. I built my relationship with him as a father, that's true. But in the authority and power of a child of God, zero power. 10 years, I love praying. I, I, I love praying. When we pray six, seven, seven, eight hours, we have 40 hour prayer sessions. I love to come in God's presence. I love it. 10 years of prayers, he says to me, huh. What a waste. They never got into my altar. They never filled the bowl because they were never prayed by faith. Ouch. <laughs> Do you think there's a piece of humble pie for me? How much I love to pray and I tell everyone how to pray, da, da, da. And he tells me 10 years of prayers. Zero faith. Zero effect. Painful. But I praise God for that next journey. Inside of, inside of, on the journey to the promised land, Every day there was manna. And I know those guys who have journeyed with a while, they know that I share about this quite often, but every single day you have to get new manna. Most of us sitting here have this old way of thinking. And if I may relate it to manna, every single time you approach a situation, or me anyway, maybe not you, but definitely me, I look what worked yesterday. I try to think what worked last week. And I try to do the same thing. But my default position in this regard is, Eating old manna. Eating old ways of thinking. When the Lord him says, come to me every day and I will give you a new word. I will give you new substance from my being and you will eat from me. And as you eat from me for this day, I will give you a new breakthrough. No, Lord, I'll rather just use what happened yesterday because it worked. So first of all, there's, there's three journeys, three things I want to say. The first step is to Use our own wisdom to handle a problem, which the Lord showed you last week, a year ago, two years ago. How about if I tell you that the Lord wants to make himself real to you every day, brand new? Not real, oh, I believe. No, he wants to show himself to be real to you every day. Oh, no, but we go seasons of deserts and God doesn't. Every single day in the midst of the desert, the Lord himself wants to reveal himself unto you. Not because I say it or feel it, but it's in the word of God. Every day in the desert, what was there? Signs, wonders, miracles, manifestations, his presence every day. So, I eat old manna. Step one. 
Step two, the Lord says, no, no, stop eating old manna, eat new manna. Awesome, thank you, Lord, fresh manna every day. Now I get to the promised land. Who of you guys know what happened when, when they entered the promised land? What happened with the manna? There was no more manna. Think about this, 40 years only knowing that manna is going to fall here at your feet. 40 years of just walking and seeing God's provision, but just landing at your feet. And you just have to pick it up and eat it. It's, this is another little bit of a mind shift. Now you cross into the promised land, which, us, which I believe firmly this, this season, this time, where are we heading? Where are we as South African Christians, Christians, people filled with Christ, going into this next season? We are entering into a land which we have never tasted before. We are going into a land, we're going into a nation which we have never experienced before. The manna will not be around you. But you will cross over into the promised land and there's your tenderized steak running there. There's the grapes hanging there. There's the, the rivers of honey and milk there. And the Lord says, go, eat. And I go, I think I want my manna. Because it will be so different. It will be so different that unless we can change our way of thinking, we will miss it. And I really believe this is a word from the Lord. Unless we can change the way we think, we will sit on the promised land, sit there and wait for the manna. And we will die. And the people with new minds will run forward and they will conquer. The only difference is how you think about it. There will not be manna. The stuff which we know, the Christian church, the way things were happening in the past, will not be the same. It cannot be the same. It cannot remain. It cannot remain. It has to change. Because there's a completely different spirit governing our country now. And we trust and believe that the prayer which has gone through now, we're walking into that blessing. How many of you guys actually have a hope and expectation that this prayer has got fruit? Really, do you believe that it has fruit? Not only just on a government level, but in your own heart. And if you say yes, I want to challenge you and say, what does that mean? What does that mean? Does that mean you're going to continue the way you've been living your Christian life? Or is it something exciting which you say, well, this will be new, this will bring life. And this will, and I trust in my heart, that all the curses over this country because of our past has been broken in Jesus' name. Because there have been men and women standing in faith against it. So now if those curses are broken, it means, are you ready for what's coming? I believe you are. Maybe me, I've got to change my mind. There's a brand new thing coming. And are you ready to receive it? Psalm 34, verse 8. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Let me ask you guys, just in your own heart, how long ago has the Lord himself been in your mouth? How long ago in your Christian walk has the very present manifestation love of God filled your taste buds? Taste and see that the Lord is good. Taste and see, taste me, eat me, and know that I am good. I believe there's another a mind shift, a, a spiritual stronghold which has been over the church prophetically for too many years to think that we have to understand intellectually what faith is about. We have to understand intellectually what the Bible is, what the history is, you know, and now I can become a Christian. The Lord doesn't say any of that. <laughs> he says, taste me, know me, and know that I am good. I'm going to just put a pause there quickly, and I would like to ask you guys to, if you're sitting by yourself, just find one or two other people. I want to ask you one or two questions, which I'd like you to just respond to each other within that group. Okay, so we keep it short, but I want to ask you one thing. Is what I'm saying relevant to you? Or do you feel you already walk in faith? Now this is, this is tricky because I've been sitting up here for 17 years and most of you guys are well my senior with a lot more wisdom and experience. But I want to ask you a question. How much of your life has been led in intellectual understanding of Christ and not tasting him. 
It's a, it's a little bit of a heavy one, so let me make it simpler. In your small groups, do you have faith? Real faith when you pray. Maybe you do. I think most of you do. But can I just ask you guys to make small groups? Just ask each other, do I have faith? And what does that mean to you from where you are now? Okay. And then also just to ask with that, do your emotions align with the faith you think you have? Do your emotions align? When I say count it joy, count it emotional joy when you go through various trials, does that make sense to you? Are you able to understand what that means in faith? Can you imagine a South Africa where a Christian knows boldly that God is with him. Can you imagine a South Africa where the businessmen and businesswomen who know Christ absolutely know and walk knowing that God has prepared the business deals before them, that God himself has anointed them with wisdom on how to handle a situation? Can you imagine a prayer life where you'd never ask God for one of his promises to become real? Can you imagine what sort of a, a prayer shift there would be if we do not ask God once for the promises he's already spoken out over you? And it becomes a thanksgiving prayer. And it becomes a prayer of boldness. And it becomes a prayer under the authority of Christ. Can you imagine what our prayers lives would be like if you never ask God once again for as long as you live for what he has already promised he has given you? Can you imagine? Can you imagine that when we read the word of God and the Lord says inside of John 15 in the prayer, and the glory which I had, Holy Spirit, please take this word. I know this word can be a little bit heavy for a lot of people in old mindsets. You know where the Lord says he will not let anyone share his glory? It's always made us stand on the back foot, on the defensive. John 15, prayer of Jesus Christ himself, praying for those people who will believe because of his, his disciples. Jesus says, the glory which I had before the creation of the world, I have given unto them. He says it. The word of God declares it. Papa, um, I, I wish this was real, but this is bigger than me. This isn't what I'm making up. This is what you're telling me, Papa. Papa, you, you tell me. L Lord, you are telling me that you have poured your glory on me. Past tense. Past tense. Past tense. Because he said that would be more than 2,000 years ago. He has already released in the heavenlies that the glory which Christ had before the world began is on you. If you believe it or don't believe it, it doesn't bother me a little bit. If you receive it or don't receive it, it doesn't bother me a little bit. Because it is. It's true. You believe it or don't believe it, it makes no difference. It's true. When he says he walks before you and prepares the way... If you believe it or you don't believe it, pfft, I don't care. I love you, but I actually don't care. You know why? Because it's true. He walks before you and he prepares the way. Holy Spirit, change my way of thinking. Back to Peter outside of the temple. What I have, I give unto you. In the name of Jesus, get up and walk. Not pride, not arrogance, not some sort of weird evangelist, you know, wanting money, preaching. Peter himself, humbled, broken by his own actions, needing grace in overflow, not by his works. What I have, I give to you. Get up and walk. Boldness. Christians, Brothers, sisters, boldness? Or is it brokenness? 
Oh, Lord, I need healing. I need healing. Yeah, I've healed you. Come, let's go forward. The season of healing in my heart is finished. There will always be small healings. Don't get me wrong. The season for healing is finished. Rise up and take the promised land boldly and know that the God who created heaven and earth <laughs> is in you. And he's so crazy in love with you, he will do everything ahead for you. Arise, co-labor, join, join forces with your mind, force your mind to join up with what God is doing and take the promised land. When the new word comes upon your heart, see there's the, the I always see heaven like this, you know, there's going to be a, a medium rare cow running there, there's going to be my bulltong cow over there. This, this is quite close to heaven for me, I don't know, just, you know, I don't need much salad, that's okay, I just need, I just need my cows running around. Step into the promised land, the manna will be no more. The quails will not come anymore. Go and eat and taste that he is good. From my heart, it's a command. Go and taste and see that the Lord is good and he is faithful and he is faithful and he is faithful. A while ago, I heard a short testimony of someone doing a big preach over like a few thousand kids. And he asked them, so we're living in a very humanistic, post-humanistic uh, society. And he asks more thousand kids, who wants to receive the Lord? And there are about 20 or 30 people which responded. And then he asked a different question. He said, okay, and those of you which don't believe that God is really that real, wants to be that intimate, you know, more to the agnostic. If you guys would actually pray and ask God himself to make himself real to you, who of you would be open for that? Something like 900 people put up their hands straight away. We don't have to try prove God to anyone. He does that himself. And he's got a desire to do it as the Christians walk by faith. Just a last thought. And I'm closing up now and I just want us to go into a little bit of prayer and ministry time. Abraham, the father of our faith, he was declared righteous the second he took his son and offered him on the altar. And once God saw his obedience, he declared him, you are the father of nations and I love you and your obedience has blessed me and I will make you the father of the nations. This is where one of you guys better say, no, 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 no. Which scriptures are you reading? Oh, oh, thank you so much for, Abraham, thanks so much for, you know, sacrificing your son. Now because you've done the sacrifice, I declare you to be the father of nations. Hello, you guys hearing me? This is, I don't know which Bible version I'm reading, but that's not what it says in the scripture. The scriptures declare Moses, oh, Moses, Abraham, the father of the faith. Why? Who can give me a, a word? Did you guys hear that? Because he believed God. He believed that the promises of God were true. And that was all the Lord needed to say, you are mine. You are the father of nations from now on. By you, my entire seed will come. It was many years after that that his kid ever came into play, that Isaac or obedience ever came into play. It was by faith that Abraham himself was declared righteous. So are you. So are you. So, if this is true, who are you? Who are you? Oh, no, I'm a Christian. How many times have you used the word Christian to say this is who I am? You are Christ-filled. You are Holy Spirit empowered. You are completely loved and adored by the creator of heaven and earth. 
He is in your corner. He is backing you. He's walking before you. He's preparing the way. He is sending his angels in front of you. He says, this is my beloved daughter. He's got a photo of you. You know that. He's got a photo of you in his wallet. And he goes, shows off to all the angels. This is my daughter. <laughs> this is my daughter. You know that he's got a photo of you in his wallet. And every single day, I think the angels might be getting sick of it already. Because he goes around to tell every single one of the angels over and over again, this is my beloved son. This is my beloved daughter. My goodness, every time when he or she looks at me, I melt with love. This is how faithful he will be with you. It's because of who he is. It's got nothing to do with what you believe or do not believe. He is faithful. He is faithful. He is faithful. You can believe it or not, it doesn't change that he remains faithful. So let us change our minds. Let us come together. Let us as friends, as family, keep each other accountable to walk in faith. Let us keep each other accountable to live the new life. The curse is broken. The old life, even over South Africa, the curses over South Africa, we step in faith and we believe, Lord, you have broken it. And we worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. In a spirit of thanksgiving, Lord, I pray right now for us, Lord, that every time we even lift our eyes to you, Lord, in every single trial, tribulation, and worry, it will be filled with thanksgiving. I want to impart with you, if you receive it, if, if what I've shared today is for you, I want to release something for you to receive. Caleb is coming to his retirement age. The people give him his retirement ticket to his old age home. Does a klomp out dan is dan in a bikini, stay by the swimbad. And say, Caleb, you know, you was awesome. He says, yo, after your kaarkie. I mean, that sounds quite good. Well, I'm only allowed to see Lara in one bikini, but. <laughs> he didn't take it. At his age, well after retirement. They said, what can we give you? What do you want? And you know what he says? I will take the mountains where the Anakites are. I will take the land of the giants because God has still promised them to me. I will take my hands and I will put it around the necks of the giants because you, my God, are with me. He didn't pray about it. <laughs> he didn't pray about it. He took it. I will take the mountains with the giants. And I don't know if you guys know the, the prayers, the blessing to Judah says, you will have your hands around your enemy's necks. Caleb says, I will take the hill country because it is mine, because my father has promised it to me boldly. Not because he had the strength, but because he knew, he knew that his God walks before him and he prepares the way. Receive the spirit of Caleb. Receive the mindset of the men and women of faith that you are not alone, that your God fills you. He prepares the way before you and he invites you to join in with his glory. Amen. 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 Let's just turn to each other and I would like us just to pray for two things. I'd like you to just turn together, pray for each other to release love, intimacy, and a new mind. And then with faith, I would like you guys to pray for rain. To pray for people you know who are sick. To pray for that thing which you've always begged God for, but you've never received. And then we are free to go. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for the honor. It was my honor to be able to come and share with you. But I just pray with all my heart that this doesn't leave you. Next time there's a problem, you pick up the phone and you phone a friend. You say, you better be free. jealous. The vet, you're, you're going to be jealous now. You don't understand. I've just gone through some heavy times. This is going to be difficult. Praise God. I'm looking forward to what's going to happen. New mindset. I pray and I release that over you in Jesus' name.